<laughs> yes! Oh my god. Expecting to catch the big in this trip for some reason. I cannot believe we've got one so early. There's lots of carp up here, one of which is very, very big. The spot is so good, I have to have a rod on it. That is like two or three inches back. Definitely got the method right, and we're definitely on fish. So the big of me Yes! It's a nice comment. There's the yellow pop up hanging out of its mouth. Another one bites the dust. It's been a very, very long time since I've managed any of my own fishing in the UK because of filming commitments and that. But we are here at Carthagena Lake and this is a place that I've wanted to get a ticket for for a very long time. It's the autumn, I've got a little short campaign on the cards. Hopefully I can nick one or two throughout September. Don't expect to catch too many because it is very tricky over here. However, in saying that, we got here last night the fish were showing in a swim called The Point, which I'm sitting in now. I managed to set up next door and wait for the guy to leave this morning. We've jumped straight in his grave and I'm literally looking out now at fish showing probably 70 yards out. It feels amazing in here, the weather's perfect. And I'm gonna try and get some white pop-ups on, flick them out there quickly to see if we can get a, a quick bite. Not that I expect to, but you never know. And then later on, I'm gonna get set, find a spot, you never know, we might get one of these magical carp. They are unbelievable in here, so you can probably sense some excitement in my voice and that's exactly what it is. I just really, really want to catch one of these fish. Where's my lighter? Both of them have gone out perfectly. You always worry though that casting on top of fish, you're gonna scare them away, but you've got to get the rods out there. So we'll learn how resilient they are to the leads going in a little while, whether they stay there or not, but feels good for the moment. I've got probably 70 or 80 yards to a line of trees and some pads, and they're showing 20 yards this way of it. So I'd like to think even if they do spook, they'll just push slightly further out into the weed in the pads and they'll come out in half an hour and really fancy a white pop-up. The decision to fish Syndicate Lakes pretty much all lies on the fish in them. There'll often be one fish that I particularly want to catch or a number of carp that are just beautiful and that's exactly what you've got here. I don't know, there's probably 60 or 70 carp in here and 80 of them are really nice. So um, it's always nice to fish somewhere where there are lovely carp. And there's one in here, um, a 50 pound common, and that's really the reason I've joined. There isn't many UK 50 commons at all around. So um, to have one that's pretty much on my doorstep, lovely syndicate of people, the lake's beautiful and all the backup fish are mint. So um, that's exactly the reason I joined here. The morning passed without action and the shows had stopped, so it felt like the perfect time to interrogate the swim to see if I could find myself a couple of decent little spots. I'm now at a stage where I've found two spots. I've got one straight out in front, about 65 yards out, and that's probably 15, 20 yards away from where they were showing this morning. But the spot is so good that I have to have a rod on it. It's in amongst weed. There's a little gravel area, probably about the size of a bed chair, something like that. Um, and they're really rare on these lakes, so they're worth really casting about and trying to find them. Um, and because it's so nice, I'm going to put my left hand rod on that just as a single rod. Probably put seven or eight spots of corn over the top and fish a tiny little yellow. I've caught lots of fish on the yellow pop-ups over corn before out of different lakes, so I'm really confident this is going to work. And then my right hand rod is exactly where the fish were showing this morning. I had a proper cast around there and it's silty. There's a small amount of silkweed out there as well. It's smooth enough to present a bait and I'm gonna do exactly the same on that rod. Probably eight spots of corn, a little yellow pop up over the top. I think it's gonna work perfectly well. I've got a few hours till dark now. One of my mates, Jay's coming over for a little barbecue this evening. So we'll settle into the evening, see if we can get one in the night. Pretty confident if I'm honest.
You hear there, Tom? You all right there, Jay boy? You all right, mate? Yeah, good. You're back home then. <laughs> back home, after. Back home on the lake. Yeah, busy day, Tom. I I, these, these sausages are looking ropey already. I don't know how I've managed that. Look at that. <laughs> Look familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, classic. It's looking good out there. I've had um, loads of fish out there this morning, but it's quieting down this afternoon, basically. But I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a good area for this time of year. What do yeah, you it is, mate, definitely. Out there off that, there's like a, as you know, as you've obviously found out today, it shallows up as you go up to that back edge. Yeah, it is really shallow. I'm having nine really shallow, birds. like foot, two foot. Oh, right. But as you come back, sort of a two or three rod lengths, you'll start going down into what they're called a drop off. It's about right. five or six, seven foot of water. Right, okay, I've got, Left hand rod's probably four or five foot, right hand rod's about six. Yeah, I see, yeah. Out, out to the right there where I fished last night, it's probably tens, is it? Yeah, yeah, goes right down Good there. Time then it starts like... dropping off into the bow out there, right. like, you know. Yeah, I mean, they were fizzing like anything out there this morning on the on sort of the right hand spot. Yeah. But that was like seven, eight, nine, ten this morning, and it's been quite since. Quite insane, but... yeah. Then they're all set, mate, so you don't know, do you? Yeah. What ones are the big ones have you, have you caught then? Have you caught you've pretty much all of them? Um, I remember you caught not, them. Big not all of them. There's, that's the thing on here. You've got the big one, which is Tango, which is a, probably at the moment just 50 pounds. That'll do nicely. But um, that's been, that's like mid 50. That can go mid 50. Right. But I suppose I've caught over the years probably 40 fish, something like that. Right, okay. You know, a few 40s. There used to be a nice 40 pound linear in here. A really, that? really nice one to call that one. Lever you've caught a couple of times. No, I didn't get the lever. I caught the unknown. Oh, that's the lever. Yeah, looking the lever looking right, one. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's a rare. I don't think that's been out for a year or so, as as we speak. I don't think. Yeah. I think the stock of fish in here are some of the best in the country, without a doubt. Oh yeah. Well, it's without like, a doubt. It's taken ages to get the ticket on it. There's people that have been waiting years yeah, isn't yeah, there, yeah. to get a ticket yeah, on it. Yeah. yeah. But. Once you get a ticket, you're not going to drop it, are you? Because no. the fish are so it's nice. And it takes you so long to actually get through all of the stock. Yeah, it's you not, could take years and years. It's a years, five, years, ten yeah. year ticket if you yeah, want yeah, to definitely. be in it. Yeah. Not if you do as many nights as you, though. Well, you if know. If you do nine nights a week, you get it done in a year. <laughs> <laughs> get out a bit. Why, why do you think you were doing so well on here when other people were struggling? I don't. What, I was what, was it all of the little bits put together? Yeah, or was it bait? Different or was bait. It? I was using. I'd, I'd say what I was, I was using sweet corn, just pure sweet corn. Right. I'd seen people use it and, you know, they were catching really well on it. Not on here, on other lakes. Yeah. And I took it to other lakes like Golden Gates yeah. and caught loads. Caught loads. Yeah. One of the reasons, obviously, I've got it is because I know you've caught yeah. that fish on it, but also the worm is like something I've used elsewhere and it works oh, so well. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous. It's the same with everything. All the timing's got to be right. Like, if, if they're out there tomorrow morning, like they were this morning, and I'm all set, the bait's out there, and all the pop-ups are still sitting out there sweet, I'd like to think I'm getting one. Yeah, that's gonna, there's but, a real high chance of that going. Yeah. Cheers, Jay, thanks for coming down in the info. Cheers, mate, no worries. 41 pounding tonight, eh? Oh, yes, good luck, mate. I cannot believe this. I was just sitting in my swim, looking out, thinking, doesn't feel the same this morning. There's hardly any fish showing out there. Literally put the kettle on, it's still on behind me. The right hand rod tears off. I am shaking. This is the rod exactly where the fish were showing. Oh, this is tense times. I really didn't think I'd be getting one this quick. Please, please. Yes. Oh, what a buzz. Do you know what? That's gone from sitting there. Oh God, don't let get out. That's gone from sitting there thinking, I don't know whether I'm going to get one at all because the weather's changed so dramatically. Yesterday morning it was like cloudy, a little bit of rain, the fish were jumping and fizzing everywhere. This morning it's clear, calm, no fish jumping anywhere. I was thinking to myself, I'm not going to get one today. And literally out of the blue, I haven't had a bleep all night. They're obviously still out there. Tactics are right, they like yellow pop, it's a light sweet corn, thank you very much. Oh. Oh. 
Oh. Blimey. Look at that hook hole. Do you reckon he wanted it? That is like two or three inches back. name go over corn on the silt lovely job what a lovely carp you are Thirty-four, just under 35 pounds what a way to start at this lake he's one of the real old ones as well Good in there. I can't quite put into words how happy I am with that fish. This is the reason you join syndicates like Carthagena. Just an unbelievable old English carp. There really isn't many like this around anymore. You can tell with his tiny little fins withered away. They're such characters. And actually this one's called Jeremy Beadle <laughs> because of his tiny little fin. Classic. Only an Englishman would come up with that name. You can travel around the world and catch loads of different carp, but these old English ones, they put a proper smile on your face. Definitely got the method right, and we're definitely on fish. The fish has kited left and got caught on a rope on this floating, I don't even know what it is. Glenn the bailiff was fishing a few swims up, so quickly shot out in the boat to try and free the line. Fish has come off. There's an air right thing out there that's got a chain and a rope, and that's the result. I'm fuming. Losing a fish on here is painful, but I had to suck it up and get the rod back out there. I had something going and the next bite could be a ridiculous 50 pound common. Absolute gutter. Especially when a place is as hard as this and you get two bites in the morning, you want to be getting both of them in. So, gutted if I'm honest, but if we try and look on the positive, I'll try and think like Neil Spooner, look on the positive side, I've got a light that don't work, <laughs> I've got two spots that are doing, I've got two spots that are doing fish, the bait's working, the rigs are working, it's now just a case of getting them back out and Maybe wait until tomorrow morning, or maybe there's a chance later on this morning. So I'm just trying to get this done as quick as I can. Oh no. Let's get a light off someone. Oh, look at that. Like magic. Little yellow pop up. This one's got isotonic and pineapple on it. The one on my right hand rod that I landed was no name. I've used that no name because it's known for catching big commons and I quite fancy catching a big common. That is perfect right there. A little bit of camo coat. Lovely sharp hook. Right, shrug the lost fish, catch another one. You can see why this is one of the popular swims at the lake because it's actually perfect for having quite a bit of a haul of carp actually because you've got the centre of the lake just to your right, you've also got pads, reeds and snags beyond the spots and then you've got some decent spots just 20 yards from that. So what happens is, is that you'll catch one, the fish will push off into safety underneath the pads, give it an hour or so and then they'll come back out once you're all set. So you never ever end up scaring the fish too far away it's in the centre of the lake and it just always looks perfect in here because you've got 
free water to the right, snags to the left, weed in front, and some lovely little spots as well. So it's absolutely perfect. Ah, what a morning this is turning out to be. The rods have been out there settled for probably an hour now, or two hours maybe. The cloud cover's come over and it's just felt really good. I'm just hoping to all the gods that there are that this doesn't go left. I'm super nervous about losing it. We've obviously timed it right here. It's September, they're feeding. We've got the bait right, we've got the spot right. Yes. <laughs> I've got about nine lily pads with that, but I'll take it. Another one bites the dust. I always feel not enough emphasis is put on your bait choice. Um, I sort of see it as there's three categories of bait. You've got boilies, you've got particle, and then you've got live bait. And one of them three groups, if you like, will always outcatch the other two by quite a long way. And if you've got the wrong type of bait on, you can really destroy a load of your time, especially in the autumn. So if you feel like you're on fish and you're not catching, and you're presented it's because you've got the wrong bait on especially on a little tiny water like this you know it's only like five acres or eight acres or something the fish are swimming over your bait all of the time if you're not catching them you've got the wrong bait on so if i find myself in a session where i feel like i should have caught the next time i'll be using a completely different category of bait um, and that's something i've taken everywhere and often when you change the bait your, your results change massively so um, think about it a lot Here he is, a brish of the old common of 26 pounds and the third bite of the morning, which goes to show we've got it exactly right. They're obviously liking the bait, the rigs are working and the spot is definitely the one. It's exactly where they've been living. And it's a very clean, new area that I don't think many people will be fishing because it's so tiny up against some trees. When I come to a place like this, I never worry about rigs because I've used them so many other places and they've always worked. So it's always about bait and location for me. The location's definitely right because you can see him jumping and the bait's definitely right because we've got him on the bank. Mwah. The lovely old carp, these ones, tiny little fins. Just typical old English carp. I absolutely love them. You're lovely, you are. Okay, Let's get some pictures. When it comes to all areas of my fishing, I always tend to go back to things I know. And my rigs are no different. They really haven't been for the last five or six years. I've stuck to the same thing because I know they work. Because there is a whole world of pain out there if you decide to have 10 or 15 different rigs in your armory. I use a spinner rig on a helicopter setup for three reasons really. One, it doesn't tangle. I can cast it anywhere and it is just not going to tangle. Two, once it's out there and it's presented on the bottom, if a fish comes in, sucks it in and doesn't get hooked, the stiff nature of the hook link means that it's gonna be sitting out there again, ready for another carp to come along. And that is so, so important. We've seen it so many times on the underwater cameras that a fish will come in, doesn't get hooked. If you've got a soft hook link on or a different rig presentation, you end up sitting out there and you're not fishing. And the other thing is, because it's on a helicopter setup and it's a stiff hook link, literally you can cast it anywhere. As long as that bead's high enough on your leg core, you're gonna cast it out there and it's gonna be sitting out there waiting for a carp. It's gonna be presented on the bottom 
um, and you know you're fishing. So it, again, it eliminates all of that doubt. You're not sitting there behind your rods thinking, mm, have I not caught one because it's tangled? That is completely gone. All you have to think about is uh, your location and your bait. I set it up very standardly. Um, no changes to what we've sort of spoke about a million times before. The only thing that I have changed slightly is from fishing 25 pound boom that's really stiff down to 15 pound boom. I actually changed that when I was fishing creek lakes last year. I was fishing maggots on the bottom on some gravel and I just thought a bit more movement in the hook link would be nice so it's not so stiff because I knew I was fishing on gravel and since then I've just really enjoyed using the 15 pound. It still doesn't tangle, it's stiff enough to sit out straight um, and it feels like there's just a little bit more movement for it to flip and catch hold in the mouth. I think to a lot of people it would look like I use a big hook as well, a size 4 Kamakura crank. And I think a lot of people wouldn't have used such a big hook years ago because they weren't very sharp at a size 4 or a size 2. But these days with the Kamakura style points they're extremely sharp and there's no reason really to use a small hook now in my eyes. I'm using it with um, a 10 or 12 mil pop up so it's a really small hook bait for the size of hook. but. The size of the hook to bait ratio, if the bait's really small and the hook's really big, I lose hardly any fish, um, especially with this setup. So I've just stuck with that for a long time now. I fish it with a micro ring swivel on the back of the hook and have the bead almost opposite the barb on the crank. So it sits perfectly over the top of the hook when it's on a pop-up. That's with a, a little green kicker that slides over the spinner swivel and the spinner swivel is tied to 15 pound boom and I just simply tie a four turn blood because it's quite thick fluorocarbon that tightens down nicely. I tie that knot onto the ring of the spinner swivel and I'll have a hook link of probably six to seven inches long and literally just tie a figure of eight loop in the other end of the boom and that just clips onto um, a quick chain swivel that's on my helicopter setup. It's really quite simple. It means you can change the hook really quickly, be super efficient when you're fishing, and you just know that over the long run you're going to lose very, very little amount of fish. So this is turning into the most ridiculous morning. This is now the third bite off of that gravel spot. We're coming up to midday and you'd usually expect not to get bites at this time of the day here but you're obviously really enjoying the bait and travelling over that really shallow gravel spot all of the time no matter what. The sun's beaming over to that far side. I think it's where they live. Nice comment. There's the yellow pop up hanging out of its mouth. <laughs> oh, I'm severely enjoying this. We've seen some decent fish going down onto the spot from the drone. So every time you get a bite, the old heart's going. <laughs> yes! Oh my god. This is more than I could have imagined, seriously. That's almost a season's worth of fish from this lake in the morning. It's just like, yes, ridiculous. They're so nice, the carp in here. Look at that. It's 30 pound of that. Literally just got that fish in the net. Decided to put three spots out quickly while the fish are obviously off the spot. That means by the, that's it, by the time I get the rod back out, the bait's done, get the fish done, and hopefully the fish are back eating on the spot. I think a lot of people fish like this on lakes where it's known to be easy and you feel like you can get fish really quickly, but you should do it on hard places as well because it's feeding time. Make the most of it, you know, definitely. Look at him. This place is not disappointed. I joined to catch some amazing looking carp and that's exactly what I'm catching. They are pristine. 
This one's 32 pounds, 14 ounces. Give a good account for itself. And just a beautiful carp. I am so happy I'm fishing here at the moment and catching these fish. It's September, the weather's good. We're getting the fishing right and it feels lovely. They've all got this sort of bluey tinge to them. Mint. Well, that marks the end of a very successful trip. I'm armed with a load of information and the will to get back to catch more. Can't wait. What a trip. You right in there, Lou, yeah? <laughs> On my way to the Spanish Embassy trying to get a Spanish visa for our trip to Spain for Monster Carp and I know that after this I'm going straight to Carfa. It's about Alamate, right? There's a fisherman there, look. <laughs> um, going straight to Carfa after this, so I need to think about what's going on going in and uh, that's all I can think about at the moment. Lou, the point, long pads or steps? What? The point, long pads or steps? What are you talking about? Just pick one. Point, long pads or steps? Yep. Um, long pads? Long pads, that's that sorted then. We're here, we're here! Right, through the gate. Bumping path to go down and then we're at the lake. From what I've heard, there are a couple of swims free, so fingers crossed I can get in one of them. Get, get me my seatbelt! That's it, thank you. Oh, the anticipation around the corner. This is the worst part of coming back to a syndicate when you drive around the 70 cars are in the car park. All right, Kibla. Okay. Thank you, I'm here. <laughs> Get it in, back! <laughs> 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 Beautiful. So, the anxiety of not knowing whether I was going to get a swim or not has gone because I'm actually in my first choice of swim that I really wanted to be in. I'm in a swim called the Long Pads, which fishes very similar water to the point that I was in last week, which is just over there, fishing out towards the pads there. And I'm sort of fishing out to the same sort of direction, but I've got better access towards the back of the pads. And that's exactly where I wanted to be because at the back end of last trip, they'd pushed off beyond where I was fishing and were just sort of sitting in the pads, lots of them. You could see them jumping right in the middle of them. So they're obviously using it as a bit of a shelter. And I'm just going to push up as close as I possibly can to them. I've got, I found one spot just to the right of where the pads is, right up against them. Um, shallow water, probably three foot, but a lovely clear bottom. And then my left hand rod is slightly further out in open water, slightly deeper water, but again, very clear and uh, it just feels so good here. It looks like you've got the right angle of attack. And if this weather keeps warm like it is, because it is boiling, I think they're going to sit up in that shallow water. So I'm excited, I'm going to get my rods ready. Now that I'm fishing a tiny little spot, I've emptied my spools of nylon to re with fluorocarbon. Contour is much lower stretch, which means casting accurately is made a lot easier and it's almost invisible in this clear water. Okay, it's 
So they are all set. I'm very confident that they're on the spots, but that right hand rod is so small, the spot that there's a, there is a chance that it's on the edge of it. So tomorrow what I'm gonna do is, is move that bead slightly further up the leg core, because if I do land just in the silkwood either side, I know I'm still fishing, but apart from that, they are out there absolutely perfectly. I'm gonna turn the Delkins on, sit back and enjoy the evening, but not before putting a few spots out. If I'm honest, it's very quiet over here in general. I've had this before actually on a few days after the full moon and it's now, uh, what day is it, Thursday and the full moon was Monday night. And leading up to it, it was really good. There was lots of big fish coming out everywhere all over the country, including here actually. Um, and then a few days after you just get, it tends to coincide with weird weather and not much action on the fishing front. So, as always, I'm not panicking on what I'm doing is not working. I'm just thinking I need to find probably an area of the lake that's got more carp that's condensed into a certain area. There's a possibility that up the other end in the swim called the dugout, there's fish up there. Um, I might move or I might stay, because I might catch one in a little while, you never know. Um, but it just doesn't feel like there's an, enough fish in this area to get a bite really. But. Well, um, we'll last that in the morning and see what's going on. If nothing happens, I'll have a little walk up the other end, see if I can find fish. Um, but as it stands, the fish look like they're a little bit spread out and not really even showing. So I think it's going to be difficult today, but we'll see. One shoot on, one shoot off. Panicked when the rod went off. Well, I've got one on. That little tiny spot that takes 9,000 casts to get on, it's produced a bite. That's a huge lesson to be learnt that no matter how many times it takes to get the rod out, it's always worth it. Because by the morning it's settled, your rig's sitting plumb on a tiny little spot right next to where they live. I changed over from that really bright yellow pop-up to a slightly darker, sort of orangey yellowy one. I don't know whether that's made the difference or Oh no! Oh, you are joking me! No! There was that orange pop I was talking about. That's very weird. Oh, it's so annoying. On a place like this, you don't want to be losing anything. let alone on the morning where, to be honest, it looks rubbish out there. I think that was a little bit of an extra bite. That's not, it's not like you're gonna put it out and get another one straight away. It looks out there. I pulled myself together and got the rod back on the spot, but the sun quickly ruined the morning bite time and then the fish backed up into the pads for the remainder of the day. The long pads was clearly a poor choice of swim by Lou, and she is solely responsible for destroying my trip and the lost fish. 
I'm due back next week for my final trip and the weather looks absolutely cock on for a bite or two. I cannot wait. Well, we are back. I'm currently sitting on an out of bounds bank that you can only get to from one swim and that swim is called the dugout. And that's the one I've managed to get in. I'm very, very happy about it as well because it's a very productive swim. It sort of owns a bit of water, probably an acre and a half. And a third of that is completely out of bounds. There's a huge tree on one corner and you can't cast past it. So there's a little area that's a complete sanctuary for the carp. And because of that, they just live up here. They're here all of the time, but the, the swim is very busy because of that as well. So it's very rare to be able to get in here. The fish are here. I can literally see them 10 or 15 yards out in front of me. And like I said, I can cast over from the dugout to here and really, which makes it even better, is, is that I can spray my corn here without having to put the spot out and scare them. So it could work out almost perfectly, this. There is, I can even see them without my Polaroids on here. There's lots of carp up here, one of which is very, very big. So I'm very excited. I've got a feeling we're gonna get one this trip. I think last week it was, it was very quiet, the weather wasn't right. And even you could see the fish, they were very sort of lethargic and not doing much, but they're swimming around very quickly. There's also a slightly deeper hole just beyond this weed, in between this weed and another weed bed. And you can see the fish dipping down into that deeper water. And I can imagine that they're eating down there because it's slightly deeper, maybe four or five foot. And that is exactly where I'm gonna try and position my hook bait. So I'm gonna get back round to the swim and get my rods ready. Very exciting stuff. Now had a very small number of cast over towards that area to so not scare them away, but I found what I feel like is the perfect spot. It's directly in between them two weed beds where the fish were holding up. It's slightly deeper and it is exactly where they were going down and feeding. Now it looks ideal, but the only difference between this spot and where I've been fishing normally on this lake is that there is still lots of weed down there. It could be that candy floss style weed or it could be Canadian. So to make sure that I'm definitely presented. Instead of putting a spinner rig over there, I've taken that off and on the same helicopter setup, I've just put a chod rig. So it's a very short pop-up rig that's popped up directly off the leg core. And instead of having that bead right at the bottom like I would normally, I'm sliding it all the way to the top of the leg core. So this section can slide all the way to the top and sit on any sort of weed that's out there. It's gonna be presented perfectly. The baiting situation hasn't changed either. I'm not gonna be putting the bait out with a spawn because I can walk around there and actually pull out with a catapult. I'm gonna be pulling out corn and that corn is gonna be sitting there all up and down in the weed and that is gonna be sitting there as well, ready for a bite. Well, 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 it's not long got dark. I've not long really put these out, if I'm honest. Right hand rod is away, which is one furthest in the corner. I really wasn't expecting one in the dark, if I'm honest. I had to walk back to make sure that this doesn't go around that corner. I can't really see where the fish is at the minute because it's so dark out there. A lot of weed around this fish. Still kiting left. There he is. What a touch this is if we manage to get him in, get him on so early on. There he is, I can see the little yellow pop up hanging out of his mouth. 
These are common. Get in the net. Yes. I cannot believe we've got one so early. I can't believe I've got one so quickly. That is such a good sign. I've got to say, I'm expecting to catch the big in this trip for some reason. I've had a hunch all the way through that it was going to come out of this swim. And that is a common. He's not quite the biggest one in here, but... Yes! Beautiful. There he is, that is a pristine Lee Valley common carp and I cannot believe I've had him so quickly. I was hoping really that we might be able to nick one first thing in the morning to get the sort of session started, but literally within hours of getting the rods out, I've got this absolutely perfect common on the bank. It goes to show as well that the right thing to do was not lose my head from last week and think, oh, what I'm doing isn't working. It's working, it's just the weather wasn't right last week. So. Stuck to it, got the rods out, got this perfect common in the net. I am over the moon. I have utmost confidence in them pineapple yellow pop-ups. Sweet corn they love everywhere. And you just have to make sure you're presented. And that's exactly what that chod rig was doing. That's the result. <laughs> I'm so happy. You are lovely. Hey, it is pouring down now, but it's no excuse not to get everything right. Tied me a little trod rig there. I actually didn't have any, I never have any rigs ready to be honest, but I definitely didn't have any of them ready because uh, I haven't fished them in a long time to be honest, but I've tied one up perfectly, He's sitting there ready to go, sharpened it. And now time one of these little puppies on. Everything's got to be right and it's going to go back out there in the dark. So hopefully we can get the cast right. But, oh, they smell good. For some peace of mind, I asked Tom Rossiter to go round to the back of the bay to hopefully see the rig land perfectly on the spot. Little did I know, he was very scared of the dark. Creatures, it's like foxes and deer and lobsters and wolves. <laughs> Okay, it's in the air. Okay. Oh yeah, f***ing nice. You having that? Yeah, that's cool. You happy? Uh, uh, only if you are. Yeah, that's good, man. Right, That was a ridiculous night all round really. Managed to catch one very quickly after getting the rods out and then we had six hours of non-stop pouring rain. Really good fishing weather really, but it's changed dramatically this morning. It's very clear skies. The sun's now beaming onto that corner that I'm fishing over to. And um, even though the weather isn't great this morning, it still looks pretty decent over there. So I'm confident of another bite or two before we leave. So um, I'm gonna, I'm going to sit it out this morning. I know the rods are out there in position. Um, there's enough corn out there and I've got them perfect little yellow pop-ups sitting out there that I have so much confidence in that um, I'm happy for them to sit out there to at least midday before I do anything with them rods. I don't really want to go around there and start pulling more corn out either because the swans are a little bit of a nightmare and it's so shallow over there that I'm worried that they'll come, come in and ruin the party for me this morning. So I'm going to sit tight and, uh, and hope something happens before 11, 12 o'clock. Speaking to a few of the lads that have fished this swim, this is the time actually that you get bites out of this swim between sort of 7 and 11 in the morning. So 
I'm sitting on my hands hoping something's going to happen. Sorry guys, I've got to go. There's so much weed around this fish, I can't even really feel how big it is, what it's doing or anything. But it is definitely still on because I can see it sort of swirling behind the, behind the weed. It's actually a bit of a touch that the weed's on there because it's not it's not kiting massively or trying to get me in trouble, which is decent. <sighs> Where are you? There you are. Weed and then a carp, weed and then a carp. Nope, didn't like that, did you? What? The other pop up hanging out of his mouth. Get in there. Get in there. Yes! Yes! Stay in there. I was thankful for the weed for a little while, and then when it went to go in the net, the weed was stopping it from going in the net. What one is he? It's one of the bigger mirrors. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Right, calm down. Yeah, mate. As an angler, what you want to try and avoid is, is getting to a position where you haven't caught any carp and not knowing why. If you're on fish, you've got a good rig on, um, and you're not catching, just change your bait and change it drastically. Don't change from a cell to an activate, change from boilies to corn or corn to boilies or boilies to maggots because um, that'll always be the biggest difference in your fishing um, if you're getting absolutely everything right and I always know I am because I have so much confidence in finding them and using the right rig. That it was a nice mid-morning bite, 31 pounds and ounces, a fish called the Olympian, I'm not sure why, he didn't even fight really hard if I'm honest, but what an absolute cracker that is. I, re I know I keep saying it, but I really didn't think I was going to catch this many, so to get a number of these beautiful carp under my belt feels brilliant, it really does. What beautiful carp these are. He loves sweet corn and yellow pop-ups. Thank you old boy. After that mega carp bite time was over and the fish had drifted out of the bay. Whilst the coast was clear, it was time to reset the trap, baiting up accurately with a catapult, then casting them lovely little choddies in the kill zone, ready in case one more of them big ones was hungry. I am literally just about to pack up for my final session. I had a bite yesterday at 11 a.m. and it's now about 11.30, so I pushed it a little bit further than I thought I needed to. And the rod's gone again. Thank you very much. There he is. Oh. What a lovely way to end a few trips this autumn. Another one is not massive, but is another old Lee Valley common carp. This probably marks the end of my September on here as well. I've absolutely loved it. 
Six fish, two losses, but three 30 pounders in this one to finish. What an autumn that has been. Thank you, old boy. What a day. Thanks for watching. See you on the bank sometime. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.